So Dr. Spees, I, I thought we'd begin by talking about how to select patients for treatment with proleukin. So what are the kind of things that you look for as you evaluate a patient? Whenever we see a patient who has advanced kidney cancer or melanoma, we really want to determine ultimately what their treatment choices are. And we know clearly with the experience we've had at our center, like many others in the United States, that proleukin up until this day is one of the options that offers potentially a prolonged durable response. And that we know we have experience in managing the side effects, which are not long term for the most part and are eas easily and fairly easy to treat among our, our healthcare professionals. So do you look at things like performance status and organ function? Do you have a particular algorithm that you go through when you're evaluating the patients up front? So great question. Uh, the first thing we do is whenever we see a patient who we think may be candidate, we assess on history and physical examination what their general performance status and overall status is and really determine ultimately if they are suitable candidates. We know, for example, that brain metastases for, is an adverse prognosticator for those patients. But we also know that, for example, age is not an adverse prognosticator, and we really know it's more about the physiology and the biology of that patient. So we then put them through cardiac and pulmonary functional status to determine if they have fi functional statuses which make them potentially suitable candidates for it. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point about the age. So at our center, we too have really eliminated age as a, as a contraindication to treatment. Uh, we use um, cardiac stress tests to rule out ischemia. We look at general organ function. And again, I think performance status remains an important uh, determinant of patients who, who might do well with proleukin. And I think one thing also that I think is, is a misnomer is also the volume of metastatic disease is not a prognostic factor. And we know that patients can have a high volume of metastatic burden and really have a really good response with this agent. So I think that's an important message that I like to share with my, my, my colleagues. Yeah, I think the message that sometimes, you know, we want these, these, these good performance status patients gets misinterpreted as low volume of disease. But it is a good point that there's never been any correlation with the volume or location of disease and ability to respond. Um, the other, the other issue is the CNS disease, and, and we certainly will try to treat that first uh, if we find it and then reconsider proleukin, and I, I think that uh, more and more centers are doing that. Is, would that be your approach? Absolutely. I, I really do think that we have really a very honest discussion with patients clearly that brain metastases is, is not an, uh, a favorable site of disease, but it doesn't necessarily mean they can't be candidates. And like you've done and, and we have done as well is we treat the brain metastases, and uh, provided they do well with that, then consider it as, as, as a potential option to go on to, to proleukin. Now, of course, as, as we know, um, proleukin is best done at specialized centers where the nurses and physicians are, are trained in, in the uh, proper administration of the drug. Um, but you must have to deal with referring physicians. So how do you choose to communicate with them when they're interested in sending a patient to you? I think that's a really important message is that we as, as an institution have really taken upon ourselves to have very effective communication with outside providers through our electronic health record, through letters, through directly contacting patients when we see them in the office and then we're reassessing them on a regular basis. We really want to make sure that, it, that people, the patient as well as the outside providers understand we're a team. We're here to treat the patients together and even if they send patients to us for treatment, Really, we want them to continue to be part of our team to make sure we go through this journey of treatment with a patient and really make sure that they feel they're part of this because clearly the first step was taken by referring these patients to us. Yeah, no, it's good to hear. I, I agree with you and I, I like to sometimes call the referring physicians, you know, when the patient goes home from their, their week in the hospital and let them know that they got through it okay. And uh, maybe my favorite call is when they're responding and say, by the way, your patient's doing really well. Yeah, that's true. So obviously one of the issues with proleukin is the potential for side effects. Mm -hmm. And um, so how do you approach that uh, when you have patients in, in for treatment? Whenever we have a patient that's being considered for proleukin, we really make it a point that both my medical oncologist and myself as, as a surgical oncologist really see the patient together. We provide a multidisciplinary approach to them. And then we really discuss in detail what are the expected complications, side effects of the treatments, and really not shy away from it, but really have a very detailed understanding of what 
can be expected during treatment, which can be very difficult during that short period of treatment. But we know clearly what the complications are. For the most part, they're predictable, they're treatable, and, and reversible. So I think that when we have discussions with patients in that regard, and similarly keeping the families involved, I think that patients are, some, are really quite reassured that they know we're, we're going to be able to get them through treatment. Yeah, I think at our site, you know, the nurses are so important to this therapy. Mm -hmm. I think once you've trained the nurses, they get very comfortable taking care of these patients. And a lot of times, you know, I'll be on my way out the door and the nurse will say, you know, Mrs. So-and-so is going to have this problem tonight. And can we just give her something, uh, you know, whether it's nausea and we can give some extra anti-nausea medication. Um, or whether they think the blood pressure might be down and we can give something to, you know, give a little bit of extra fluid. Um, so I find them to be really helpful in managing the side effects. I think that's a great, great point is, is our nursing staff and, and our healthcare teams really have a lot of experience in treating these patients and really, for the most part, get on to treating these potentially complications very early on before they have sequelae. And I think that's really and a very effective and important message. Yeah, and I think the other point with the proleukin side effects is, is the timing. Um, they often occur you know, during treatment and then they'll, they'll resolve pretty quickly. And it's an important point to make because some of the other systemic therapies we have, the toxicities often don't manifest for a while. And so the, this, um, uh, as bad as it is, I think, to have the patients have to be in the hospital, it really does help us manage the side effects so there's less problems when they go home. At least that's what we see in our patients. That's, a, that's an excellent, excellent point. I think that patients are also very reassured when we keep them in a the hospital. They definitely feel they, they're getting the very diligent and, and supervised care that they feel that, firstly, we care, and secondly, that we're able to sort of take care of them throughout this, this challenging period. So another point I wanted to talk about is, is how we follow up these patients. So obviously today there are many options that patients have um, uh, for cancer therapy, and so it's always important to give each treatment the best possible chance to work. And so I'm just curious when you re-image your patients um, to see if, if, if proleukin is working when you, when you have a patient undergoing treatment. So that for me is one of the important things with this agent is that we know with proleukin we're able to sort of determine treatment response fairly soon after they've completed their, their treatment. So typically within a four to six week period we get imaging studies and we're able to determine treatment response. And I know for the patient as much as for the healthcare team and, and the doctors, it's reassuring when we do see that a patient has a good response. And if they don't have a good response, we're able to sort of get them to other potential therapies in a very quick manner and without necessarily burning any bridges. And I know that when we have those discussions with patients, they really feel very relieved knowing we're not necessarily going to go down a road that we can't sort of consider other options. Clearly, we can with this agent. So lastly, I want to ask you, so given that there are so many other therapies today, um, why are you still using proleukin? That's a great question. I get that question a lot, as much for my patients as potentially some of the outside referring physicians. And I think we have to be very honest, is when you look at the literature and you're looking for a meaningful, long-term, durable response, this agent has tested the time. Proleukin is still one of the only agents that we know clearly when patients have a meaningful response, it potentially could be very long-term, and it is something that patients clearly are seeking. Uh, patients that come in to see us are not looking for a partial response or stability disease for four to six months. They're looking for potentially long-term meaningful response. And I think that remains why this is something that patients are coming to see us and that we offer it to our patients. I think immunotherapy is a very powerful tool for cancer patients. And it's important to remember that they do get durability with this. They, they get to live on the, the tail of the curve, as we like to say. And proleukin is uh, an important immunotherapy drug uh, for patients to consider. And, and I think it's um, important that both patients and physicians know that this drug is available to them.